So Nintendo's been on a tear lately. They're fighting Power World. They're taking down emulators and they're going after content creators, which the biggest one, at least in our niche, is Rust. They're going after Retro Game Corps and they took down two of his videos and gave his channel copyright strikes, which if you get three strikes, your channel is gone and you're banned from the platform. Now, personally, I don't think that's going to happen to Rust. I'm pretty sure Nintendo is just picking him to make an example out of it because his channel is pretty much the biggest one in our scene. It might not have the most subscribers, but it is the most influential one as far as emulation and handhelds is concerned. So I think that's why these signals came out. I really hope that a couple months from today, this is just kind of a bad memory and that's it. We can just kind of move on from it. But Nintendo is clearly trying to send a message to everybody to stop with the emulation. Don't show their games if they don't want you to. And basically keep their name out of your mouth. That's pretty much what Nintendo is trying to say. Now, there's some people saying that they're being unfair to the community and that they can't believe that they're cheating in that way. But the reality is that we're not Nintendo's community. Their target is a different group. We're people that grew up with Nintendo. We love those games and we want to enjoy them and share them. But at the end of the day, they want the person that's all about their next game, not the people that care about last year's game. So... That's just a reality. They could lose all of us and Nintendo is going to be perfectly fine because they're a huge company. They make the fourth most amount of money out of video games. I think it goes Microsoft, Sony, Tencent, and then them. So they're obviously not hurting because of a few people emulating stuff and we can all be really mad about it. But at the end of the day, Nintendo doesn't care. They're going to keep doing what they do. Unfortunately, it seems that Russ isn't the only one that they've gone after. Uh, earlier today, I was watching a video from Mr. Sujano, and he was talking about another YouTuber who is remaining anonymous, but apparently they have a bigger channel and Nintendo's sending them warnings, which is kind of messed up that Nintendo would send other channels a warning, but directly try to go after Russ's videos that way. Even in the past with videos from, I believe the Fox was talking about this too, where he had some of his videos taken down, Usually people get warnings, but no, they directly went with copyright strike the video gone, which is really messed up because now you're hurting somebody's livelihood when they're really not doing anything to hurt you directly and not even giving them a chance to take the stuff down or anything like that. One of the videos, I guess, kind of makes sense. He was talking about the mix switch and he wasn't really showing Nintendo games outside of a quick thing as a pass but Nintendo still looked at it as something they don't want out there. The other one was for Wii U emulation, which that's a dead console that Nintendo isn't supporting anymore. The only reason I could think they don't want that is because maybe we're finally getting those HD ports for Wind Waker and Twilight Princess, and they don't really want the word getting out. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they're, or maybe they just did it because they want to take him down. But there's so many other videos they could have picked that actually show nintendo games but they went with those i don't i don't know if maybe i'm looking too much into this or if there's actual reasons for that but regardless of that it's really unfortunate again i hope that in a couple months this is just kind of in the past and just a bad memory and we can continue with business as usual minus as many nintendo games because I know personally I'm going to stay away from showing them and I'm pretty sure most people in the community are not going to be showing Nintendo games anytime soon. Now the main thing that I want to talk about in this video was why Nintendo's killing Switch emulators now. It doesn't make that much sense to wait till the end of a console's life cycle to actually go after the emulators that you're saying are hurting your sales and promoting piracy and all this stuff. The Switch came out in 2017. Within a year, I believe it was, people were emulating the Switch already. So it's not like this is something new for this console. The emulation from the Switch has been going on for a while now. And they waited until now when the console is at the end of its life cycle to actually do something about it. That's really weird because they had years to stop it. Now, you could argue that maybe they were just trying to build a case against Yuzu and that would kind of make sense. But reportedly, they contacted the dev for Ryujinx and offered him a deal to stop development on that emulator. Now, we don't know what the deal was. We don't know what the terms were, whether it was a threat or something monetary. Personally, I hope it was something monetary because at least at that point, the dev does get something out of it. But regardless of that, 
they could have done something like this with Yuzu a long time ago, but they didn't. So for the years that the Switch was the most relevant, emulation was around and they kind of just let it keep going. So why start to shut it all down now? My theory is that the emulators that were working for the Switch, Yuzu and Ryujinx, would have been able to emulate Switch 2 games. Now, I know the Switch 2 is going to be a more powerful system, but the architecture might not be that different. They're both going to be ARM-based and they're going to be using uh, Tegra chips. So it's not too far-fetched to think that some of the work that was already done could be applied to the new emulators and Nintendo was trying to stop that before it became an issue for them. That would make sense, at least to me, because they don't want a Switch situation with the Switch 2. They're saying the Switch 2 is going to be backwards compatible with the Switch library, or at least that's what reports are saying. I don't want to say Nintendo saying this because that's not the case. But if it is going to be compatible and they're going to have similar architecture because they're both ARM based, then chances are either development for the Switch 2 could have been sped up with the current Switch emulators or the Switch emulators could also work with this new console that's coming. If you look at their track record with other systems like GameCube to Wii and Wii U, they're very, very similar, essentially just kind of like an overclocked version of the previous one. So it's not that crazy to believe that something like that could happen. Now, is that the case? I don't know. We won't really know until the Switch 2 is out, but I do think the timing is a little bit interesting. That Switch 2 should have been out already. It was reported to come out at the start of 2024, but then it got pushed back. Now it's getting pushed back until next year. And some of the reporters saying it's because of the mix switch. The mix switch kind of made Nintendo rethink a lot of things because reportedly the cartridges for the switch are going to work on the switch too, like they did from the DS to the 3DS. Now with that uh, handheld, they put essentially a DS inside of a 3DS. So it's not that crazy to think that we're going to have something similar with the switch. The backwards compatibility kind of makes me think that yes these emulators could have been applied to what is coming down the road we really won't know that much about the switch until it's actually out and we're in hand this is just me sharing some theories with you guys about what i think is going on because i think it's pretty interesting to look at these and sometimes it's fun to put your tinfoil hat on and just talk about stuff like this so yeah I think that's why Nintendo's trying to shut those down. Because if it was really about just stopping emulation, they would have gone after Dolphin years ago. That emulator has been around for about 20 years now, and they haven't shut it down or done anything to stop them. Um, we have Drastic, we have Moopin, we have so many Nintendo system emulators that are still going around, and they haven't really done anything about those outside of just kind of frown their faces at it. They kind of let them keep going. So why now? what's so different with these two especially considering you're not going to be making that much more money off the switch games when the switch 2 is already coming but yeah i'm ranting i just wanted to get this video out and talk for a little bit i, I like doing these kind of talking head videos just to share thoughts that i have about things if you guys agree with it let me know in the comments if you don't again let me know in the comments it's just interaction and hopefully you like this type of stuff if you do i'll definitely do more and if you don't probably still will so yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one.